The following was recorded in front of a live studio audience at the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. This is the United Podcast Network. Welcome to the Sicilian Corner, winner of the Italian Heritage Media Award, with your hosts, Tom Zappala and Mike Lamazzo. Welcome, 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 Mikey boy. Welcome to the, I was going to say the Great American Collectible Post Show, but that's, show. that's Post, my show Post that's on show. next. Oh, you have a show coming on next? That's the next show. What's, that? What's the name of it? Uh, forget it. This is the Sicilian Corner. Welcome, everyone. Tom Zapp. With my, good morning, with everybody. my big brother, Mikey Lamazzo. It's so good to see some rain. Broadcasting oh. from the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe. And by the way, Chrissy Cunningham, uh, one of our two crack producers. Is Hello. Hello. Always Hello. drumming it into... I'm the good chip lollipop. Hello. Can you shut your mouth for one no. minute? Hello. <laughs> You're telling me? Drumming into our head, and I am always remiss in doing it. Please share the show, right? Let's no. try this again. Please like, share, and subscribe to our there YouTube you channel, but specifically share One this One out of show. three we, wasn't bad. We, we want to really extend the uh, viewership here. We, As much as we love all of you, we want to... Yeah, uh, we want to expand. Yeah. The numbers it, have been going up. I know that. I want to yeah. expand into Asia. Yeah. 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 South America. South America, too. Yeah. We have both. I mean, I could, I could look at the stats. We're probably already there. All right, listen, we have a great show today. We have a, kind of a little mix. We've got Michael Castaldo coming in in the second. On Zoom. Not coming in. Yeah. yeah. He's got a new album out. Uh, he's got a new release. Got a new release out. Mm-hmm. Then in the second segment, I heard that Father Mikey's coming in. I don't know. With this weather? He'll be here. He'll be here. Father Mikey will Wind be here. New Hampshire, right? Route 111. No lights today. It was like the OK Corral at, 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 at noon. Uh, Everybody was going every which way. Yeah. And then uh, I have feast. You're going to have to bear with me today because I have what I call feast head. I'm a little, I'm a little my mind is a little foggy because of the feast. Okay. A little tired. Yeah. Not just me. I mean, everybody did. The crowds were good, huh? Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Excellent. We had, I've been a member of the St. Alfredo Society for 35 years, and I put this in the top six or seven. Feast and for a combination of weather, weather, the crowd. It was a festive crowd, and I think it was a festive crowd because of the COVID thing over the last couple of years. A lot of pent up demand. People just had a blast. Had a blast. Mm-hmm. We had great crowds. Uh, everything was good. Our good friend Sal Erna, we honored him. His son. How many, s- how many years, Tom, for him? Sixty. Sixty years. He's been. 60 years he's been with that band at our feast. Jesus. Yep, honest to God. And plus, all the feasts and the not then. It's so nice seeing the St. Alfie. And, we had, and we, had, uh, we had him on stage on Saturday night. We honored him. The city of Methuen, city of Lawrence, proclamations from the, from the uh, Senate. It was great. And his son, Sully. Yeah. Sully. Uh, Tell people who he is. Sully Erna, who is the lead singer for Godsmack. A very, very famous worldwide band. They do- Sully donated, his foundation donated $10,000 to the organization plus... To the St. Alfio Society. Plus a $2,000 scholarship forever uh, for one Lawrence High student every year. 2000 bucks. Pretty cool. Not only that, but... So we have six scholarships we give out. So now it's seven. Now it's seven. Right. So not, not only that, but the, the thing that was most exciting is that Sully on stage in front of everybody said that he, now I'm not saying Godsmack, but because Sully plays with a couple of different phenomenal bands. Oh, I didn't know that. Worldwide. I mean, some of the best musicians. He said that next year he would perform at the feast. So that'll be cool. That'll be really cool. Boy, that'll draw people from all over. I know that. That's good. Anyway, before we, before we continue, uh, do we have that cut, David, of, of the friends? So, what do you got? Do, yeah, do just, the backstory. We'll get it queued up. Okay, so real quickly, real quickly, um, you know, the S- Holy Rosary Church now is called the Holy Rosary Shrine. Yep. And some of these, some Franciscans. What's have, the dif- differential between shrine and church? Do you know? I don't know. Oh, that, I don't, I'm sorry. I don't know the I'm difference there meant between to be a separation of shrine and church. I don't oh, know. No. The, <laughs> I don't know the difference between a Volkswagen and a, and a Cadillac. Did you, did you find the church? I did. You did. I did. Right. I did. That's half the battle. All right. So anyway, 
These Franciscans have yeah. come in and are running the parish. They are for, four priests and four brothers. There's eight of them. There's eight of them. Wow. Um, Poor Father Martin couldn't get anybody. Father Francis is kind of like, he's one of the head honchos. I have never met such a, uh, just a devoted. Every, everybody loves him. I mean, listen, you know me. I'm not the most religious guy in the world. No. I'm being get honest out. with you. I'm Please, not the, don't but, knock yourself. Uh, but I pray. I'm spiritual. But I'm not, I'm, I'm kind of like a Christmas uh, Easter kind of a church goer. Is that fair enough? Weddings. All right? That's so, it. No. We, we call that seasonal. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Anyway, you know, as always, we play the drums. Yeah. Myself, Ronnie, and Dominic, we do a little drumming. Remember that older woman who used to have a ball with her? Oh, yeah. Liz. 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 Yeah. She was so, you know, we do our little thing, and we're, I'm walking down the street with Father Francis. Now, you have to understand something. The Franciscans, literally, they have nothing. They don't even own phones. They choose to live like they live. Poverty. So we're talking, and he says, geez, you're pretty good. I said, well, thanks, Father, Padre. Oh, you played? I played. Oh, okay. Uh, he says, you know, I used to play, too. Oh. I said, really? He went fishing. I said, wait a minute. You fishing. used to play drums? He says, yeah, I was a percussionist. Tell me for a rock band. I, he says, I graduated from the New England Conservatory of Music. I said, what? I graduated from the New England Conservatory. I said, stop the band. We stopped the band. Sal earned his band. I said, Sal. Sal must have loved it. Oh, yeah. I said, Sal, come over here. Yeah. Father Francis graduated from New England Conservatory. I want him to play. Sal says, you got to play. Do you know Stars and Stripes Forever? He says, yeah, but I can wing it. So here's a little cut, if we can, of... Now listen, I don't I hope it... Can, now... As a drummer, those are called triplets, paradiddles. Paradiddles? Yeah. Paradiddles. The guy was unbelievable. I mean, he, as a drummer, you got to, I mean, he was doing stuff that it was like, wow, very impressive, very impressive. What exactly is their mission in the city of Lawrence? I mean, their mission, they literally, these eight men yeah. literally beg. All they are here to do is to help are the poor. Serious? They cannot, uh, we, I had a long talk with Brother James, one of them. They can't, if I said to him, here's, here's, here's 50 bucks. That would never happen. Okay. Here's 20 bucks. <laughs> All right. That's for sure. Still pushing it. <laughs> here's 20 bucks. Yeah. Go buy yourself a meal. Can't accept it. They can't accept it. What, you have to, what I would have to do is go buy the food and bring it to them. They cannot, they don't accept money, they don't own phones. The only thing that the diocese pays for is they live in these little apartments throughout the city and their electricity. That's it. Everything else, they're on their own. So obviously, I mean, we had a long talk. Boy, you talk about dedication. Oh, they're, they're amazing. They are absolutely amazing individuals. And these are guys that are all college educated. Uh, I mean, they have skills that are amazing. They are, again, I'm not the most spiritual guy in the world, but they have dedicated their lives to like how St. Francis of Assisi lived. You know, I don't, I, I'm almost inclined to believe that they're the, they're the total opposite of what we've talked about, and that's the opulence and, and, and the wealth in Rome. You know what I mean? That, that's, that's what they're not. And that, you know what I mean? Yeah, I, I do. 
And the Archbishop is like that, too, obviously. Uh, wow, look uh, what he did. He sold that match, and the first thing he did? Yeah. So uh -huh. anyway, yeah. anyways, it was a great feast. Uh, thank you to everybody that attended. You know, I, I had a very, very small part. The guys, Tony Parmesano, Wayne, Joe Madolo, the gang that set up the street, the lights, those are the guys, the guys that cooked. Those are the guys that the street deserve, looked good. That they, the they deserve the credit. Nice. All right. Speaking of food, our good friend, Peter Schipoletti. Not Schipoletti. You always say Schipoletti. I don't. You do. Schipoletti brought in some tomatoes for us to taste. He, said, he asked if we could kind of give him our opinion. So let's try these, Mike, and then we're going to pass them on to Chrissy and to David. So this is called a black cherry tomato. Kind of looks like a, one of those fireballs when we were kids. Yeah, you remember those? How hot they were? Mmm. These are good. These are sweet. They're a little sweeter. One more. All right, black cherry. You know what people love on a podcast? Listening to people eat. I know that. But here, David, you can pass Smack this on. their lips. You can pass this on. Now we have <laughs> what's called the cherry bomb. And don't eat more than one, okay? Can I tell you a story about the cherry bomb? Cherry bomb. Cherry bomb. We, uh, we had cherry bombs. And, of course, they have a wick that you can throw them in water. Not those kind of cherry bombs. But go ahead. So we opened up a sewer. A sewer cover. David? Are you going to pay attention to I'm me? listening. I can mu Unlike you, I can multitask. So we threw a cherry bomb into the sewer and then ran like hell. Well, the sewer gas ignited. The flames went up like 15 feet high, <laughs> but it blew off the, uh, the covers of the, the sewers going down. It went for like a quarter of a mile. I would have arrested the you. The woods. They should have arrested you. Okay, these are called... That's why this eyebrow I, it's a little bit singed. <laughs> this is called a pink princess. Like me. Oh, my goodness. Pink princess. This cherry bomb is outstanding. I, I like the black yeah, cherry so far. Your mother teaches you to chew with your mouth open or closed? Both. Jesus, you too. Okay. <laughs> I apologize on behalf of both of That's them. That's okay. Peter, what are these called? Right now. Starlights. Starlights. Mm. Did you get the yellow one? Mm. Very tasty. I had these last week at... Uh, Very at, tasty. I had these last week at Peter's. And last but not least, Peter, what are these things? Sun golds. Sun golds. Ooh. He, he knows all the names. That's the scary part about Sun golds. Are, these are good. A little leash. -y. Really? All right. My, my first, uh, what, was the, what was the one he just shoved in his mouth? Sun gold? No, the long one. Starlight. Starlight. Black cherry and starlight. Get my vote. Okay. How about you? I like the cherry bomb. You like the cherry bomb. David? Chrissy, you can eat them as, uh, as the show goes on. It. Thank you so much. Try not to make any noise. Please. Yeah, I'll mute myself. Please. Don't worry. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Peter, very much. Plus, Peter also brought some big tomatoes, some cucumbers, some little of everything. White cucumbers. White cucumbers. You don't so find ooh. those. We'll, we'll take a few home. We'll take a few home if that's okay. Um, anyway, uh, we saw you at the feast. You made an appearance, and I appreciate it. Very nice. I, uh, I want to see the Saints come out. Yeah, it was good. And yeah, I, and I uh, met a lot of people. You know who I got a phone call from, Tom? Uh, Monday. Johnny Cavallaro. You remember John? No. He used to go on Nunzio show a lot. Mm. You remember I do. him. I, actually, I saw him at the feast. Yeah. Yes, I well, saw Johnny. he didn't see me at the feast this year because, you know, I've taken a giant step back. Thank God. But Yeah, I know. <laughs> Giving everybody a break. But he called me. To make sure I was okay because he didn't see me emceeing the shows. And I thought that, that, was that nice. meant a great deal to me. Oh, that was good. Yeah, um, yeah a couple of people asked for you. And you, you were missed. You were sorely missed. Why not missed. so? No, no, you, you, were, you were sorely missed. And, uh, you know, but hopefully next year we, uh, you know, maybe we can, we can talk you into helping out with maybe some entertainment or uh, something or vendors or sell Chris Bellies or rice balls or something. Rico Bar did a nice job. Uh, I did not hear him. Oh, you were marching, right? You I went was. by, yeah. Yeah, I was, I was not. I got to tell you something, though. I know it was nice because he played Italian music. And there, Absolutely. Wasn't, and there wasn't much Italian music this year. But I agree. To it, satisfy everybody. Exactly. Because people are extremely critical 
You're right. Uh, uh, See, you, you know, you, you're, there's, you a fine, there's, there's a fine line now because you, draw you have to. The youngsters. Exactly, exactly. Next year, and we talked about that. Hopefully, for the feast next year, we're going to have that balance well, uh, with the entertainment. If you have Sully Erna, I mean. Sully Erna will be for the kids. Yeah. We have some potentials, hopefully, for the older generation, which, you know, I, I hope it all. We'll see what happens. It's fluid. The word is fluid. We're very fluid. For next year, really, I saw it is, but it was uh, it was a good feast. Uh, you were missed, as I said. I got to tell you something though. It was very strange. I know some people. I've gonna, had more time on my hands than I know what to I do. I know that. I know some people are going to probably come after me for this, but Greg Fratto's rice balls, uh, Crispelli USA. Yeah, Go ahead. Crispelli's were great. You don't like the rice balls? They're a little small. I mean, they're probably... Tommy, what is it today? They're a third... I mean, you go into you Shaw's, you go to buy something. They're a third smaller than they were, I think. I think he's probably trying to keep his price structure the same. You have to shrink it somewhere. What are you going to do? You have to cut back on the product you use. If, for every third one, if you can make another one, you can keep your price the same. And I think that... And I'm not sure. I didn't have one, so I don't know. There was another guy there that was... Did selling, you try it, Chris Belly? Uh, I did. Okay. It was fine. I had one. I had just one. One anchovy. It was delicious. Why, you got a problem with Chris Bellies? No, I'm just curious. <laughs> yeah, I had one. You was ate good. one. I can't eat one. I had one. I can't eat one. Me, I go crazy. Can I tell you something? It's funny. It's funny you mentioned that. You don't go, you don't. Can I, I ate very, very little because it was so busy. As God be my judge. I used to lose four or five pounds. I, that's what I did. I, you know, David, you know how I'm fanatical about my bicycling and my weight, right? And, you know, I always go into the feast saying, oh, you're going to gain five pounds, blah, blah, right? I weighed myself yesterday. It's the lightest I've been in two years. I believe it. Two years. No, I believe it. I had, the only thing Between I ate. sweating. That's exactly, and the walking and the running around. I ate, uh, I had a. Chicken palm sandwich uh, after the feast on Sunday night. Who makes the best chicken Holy, palm? Holy Rosary. The Holy Rosary people. Okay. The church. Okay. I had a chicken palm and I had a, uh, I didn't even have a sausage, a rice ball. And I had a rice ball. That, that was, was it. it. The whole weekend. Wow. I had, when I got home, I had sandwiches and stuff like in between breaks and stuff. But yeah, that's all I had. And I, you know, that, and I had, I did have a couple of slices of Triple's pizza. You know, folks, and I just want to add, the feast just concluded, and it was great to see so many people having fun down there, Tom, and laughing like it used to be. It went back to Absolutely, three days Mikey. like it had been for the last few years. Absolutely. And there's a, in my opinion, and I'm not trying to be prejudiced, but I go to a lot of the feast. I believe the Sant'Alfio Society is the most organized. Absolutely. And the preparation, now... You got a meeting in two weeks. A couple of weeks, yeah. A couple of weeks about the hundred. Here we are. We there's still confetti on the ground. Yeah. And the guys are thinking, what are we going to do for our hundredth and starting to lay? Yeah, I think I think the hundredth is going to be. It's really going to be an experience. Uh, unlike it's going to be a happening. Yeah, unlike we've ever seen. I mean, the some of the plans, you know, that are, that are that are beginning to formulate are, are pretty impressive. So we're going to see what happens. As I said, everything is fluid. No decisions have been made. Tony Parmigiano has done I a agree. magnificent job. I agree. 100%. As president of this organization, I have been a member for 35 years, and Ray De Fiori, great job. Wayne, Steve Zani, Sam Lombardo, uh, Tony took Sully, it to another level. Tony, Tony Parmigiano, man, I, I just, uh, I, I tip my tip my hat to him. He's he's done a a great job. Great job. So, uh, you know. And not just him. Oh, no, no. Wayne, the, the whole crew. All right, listen, we're going to take a quick break. Peter, I don't know if you know this. Have you ever, I know Peter, Peter Schipoletti is here and you can't see him on camera, but have you ever met Father Mikey? Heard of him. You've heard of him. You're going to get to meet him. I didn't tell you he's coming, but he's coming. That remains to be seen. Okay. We're going to take a quick break. Hang in there. And Father Mikey, hopefully, is outside coming up the steps. We'll be right back. 
Ciao, this is Esther of You, Me, and Sicily. I want to talk to you about Tommy Amin and the great staff at Butcher Boy Market. Families, foodies, and home chefs come together at Butcher Boy to talk good food and create traditions. They offer the best in quality cuts of beef, pork, lamb, poultry, and restaurant style steaks and chops. Produce? All of their produce is hand selected to complement any meal or even to make it your main course. Their deli serves fresh roast beef, turkey, and beautiful imported Italian cold cuts, cheeses, and antipasto. And don't forget the Butcher Boy Bakery, featuring sweet delectables from all over the state, as well as their very own bakery. That's Butcher Boy, where the secret to a great steak is, of course, the steak. Located at 1077 Oscott Street in North Andover, Massachusetts, in the Butcher Boy Plaza. Ciao! Looking for that something special? All of us here at the Sicilian Corner suggest trying Ristorante Uno, located at 119 Salem Street in Boston's historic North End. For the most exquisite dining experience in an intimate setting that serves authentic regional Italian cuisine and features old country service, try Ristorante Uno. Did we mention their award-winning wine cellar? Ristorante Uno, 119 Salem Street in Boston's historic North End. Call 617-573-9406 for reservations. That's 617-573-9406. Tell them the boys from the Sicilian Corner sent you. Today. 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 Today, Lawrence General Hospital has affiliations with leading Boston academic medical centers, top specialists from Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center and Floating Hospital for Children at Tufts Medical Center, work with our local doctors to bring world-class care close to home. Today, amazing partnerships are happening at Lawrence General Hospital. To learn more, visit lawrencegeneral.org slash today. Italian artisan cuisine combines simple, fresh ingredients with time-honored preparation to create an incredible culinary experience. At Tuscan Kitchen, located in Salem's historic depot district, talented chefs prepare everything in-house from scratch for all to see. Guests enjoy their meal literally in our kitchen as food is prepared right in front of you. Wood ovens burn from morning till night, roasting vegetables, baking bread, and firing delightful thin crust pizzas. Prime steaks are seared on a wood grill. A rotisserie slowly roasts marinated whole chickens and lamb, while a pasta maker creates fresh fettuccine. More than just artisan cuisine, Tuscan Kitchen features the wine bar, live entertainment, weekly wine tastings, and elegant private dining and event space. Call 603 952 to 4875 or visit TuscanKitchen.com to make a reservation and learn more about the culinary adventure that awaits. In Italy, cooking is an art form. Tuscan Kitchen. Experience artisan Italian. Essex Orthopedics and Optima Sports Medicine is pleased to announce the opening of their American College of Radiology accredited MRI unit at their location at 16 Bellum Road in Salem, New Hampshire. So now, in addition to receiving the best orthopedic care in the Merrimack Valley, as well as physical and occupational therapy at Optima Sports Therapy and Rehab, you can also have your MRI all in one convenient location. The doctors and staff of Essex Orthopedics and Optima Sports Medicine have been dedicated to providing outstanding medical care to the Merrimack Valley in southern New Hampshire since 1984. Located on Route 97, just off exit 2 from Route 93 North, on the second floor of the Workout Club of Salem. You deserve the best care, and that's exactly what you'll get from the board-certified surgeons at Essex Orthopedics and Optima Sports Medicine. Please call 603-898-2244 to schedule an appointment. A loyal sponsor for the Sicilian Corner is Hilton Oil Company. Hilton Oil has been located right across from the South Lawrence Common since 1932 at 101 South Union Street. Hilton Oil Company specializes in 24-hour burner service, oil deliveries, including automatic deliveries serving all the Merrimack Valley area, plus portions of southern New Hampshire. If you want your car fixed right the first time, bring it to Hilton's state-of-the-art service station. Remember, Hilton's is also a mass state inspection station. Hilton Oil Company, 101 South Union Street in Lawrence. Call 978-687-9793. 
This is Cindy. And Mike Kunzla. Owners of Grazia Italian Restaurant in Dragut, Massachusetts. The hidden gem of the Merrimack Valley. In addition to spectacular views overlooking our golf course, we have an incredible Italian chef, Benny Curdy. Benny was born and raised in Italy and came to be our executive chef in 2013. Benny is so passionate about cooking. If you haven't experienced the food at Grazia Italian Restaurant, you're truly in for a treat. Grazia Italian Restaurant, located at Four Oaks Country Club. I am pleased and honored, as well as you should be, (laughs) to have the complete opposite of the Franciscans that I was talking about (laughs) earlier. What a wonderful job they're doing. Father Mikey, how have you been? We didn't see you at the feast. Where were you? I was there. I came down Sunday. Did you bless people? Uh... I listened to two confessions. You know where behind the bandstand? <laughs> yeah. You know, he's the only guy I know that can hear a confession from like a 25-year-old woman. Walks up to him and say, you hear my confession? And he says, absolutely. Let's go behind the bandstand. It's the, exactly. <laughs> right. Exactly. It's just amazing. It is. All right, Father Mikey, uh, first of all, thank you for coming. Boy, I'll tell you. Uh, Miss Peter Schipoletti. Hello. How are you, Mr. Schipoletti? It's a um, pleasure to see you. Father Mikey, uh, this week. I don't think we've ever met, have we? No, we haven't. This week's advice. Bless you, my All right, son. enough. Can we continue, please? Advice from it's Father Mikey. part of my flock. Oh, yes. Okay. This week's question, and which we call, by the way, advice from Father Mikey, is kind of an interesting question. It has nothing to do with the original concept of what the Father Mikey segment was going to be. About. I know, but listen, now, we, we, I, we Chrissy can't. was kind enough to make me a copy of what you We have. don't control the questions that come into the studio. We see, we read them as we see them. So I'm going to read this I want to, I'm looking for questions from people like Tough. That. Here's the question. Tough. Dear Father tough. Mikey. <laughs> You're telling me tough? You want to dance? <laughs> <laughs> Be careful of lightning. <laughs> Dear Father Mikey, yeah. I seem to have a gambling problem with slot machines. I spend money like water. I go on weekly expensive trips, eat in the finest restaurants, and drink the finest wines. How can I maintain what used to be an amazing physical body, but has now turned into a mound of mush because of lack of exercise? Please help. I am desperate. Signed, a portly guy. Okay. You know something? There, there are many facets to that question. So i sure I, there are. I, I would, Chrissy, like I said, made me a copy. So I'm just going to take them one by one. He has problems with slot machines. He's an elderly gentleman. And by that, I mean he, he's going to be 78 years old. So he's up there. Right. He does have his age And here. he enjoys the slot machines. And in moderation... There is nothing wrong with but that. But he's saying he has a problem, and it's not in moderation. Well, he maybe say, he, 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 he in he his mind he thinks it is. But he also, in the conversation and in the writing, said that he has assets of two point six million dollars. That's a good point. <laughs> okay, that are liquid. That's that, and he's liquid. He says stocks, bonds, and treasury. All right, all right. I, you're making your point so there. He, he's talking about going to, and playing the slot machines. Well. If you're going to a five-star restaurant and a five-star hotel, there's more than just the slots. You can have a nice, beautiful spa appointment, have them come up to your room. Pedicure. You and your girl or your wife or whatever, Gomadi, whatever. Well, how, how, how would you know this, Father? Just out of curiosity, Father. People Mike. tell me. I listen to confessions. <laughs> is that what it is? Yeah. So you know what a Gumada is? Gumadi is... Uh, oh, a date. A third person. A date, okay. It's, it's a third <laughs> a third individual. <laughs> okay, continue. There's a lot, there were a lot more gumaris back <laughs> in the day, you know, because that used to be... The thing. Po- yeah. It was the thing. Yeah. Go ahead, continue. So, anyway, expensive trips, going to the finest restaurants, there's nothing wrong with that. God bless you, my son. This guy's name, I believe it was John. John? There's nothing wrong with that, man. If you get pleasure, if you get pleasure out of going to some really nice places and 
eating good food and having a nice glass of wine with your meal, you deserve it. At 78 years old, you deserve it. You said you didn't have any children. You said you were widowed. Who are you going to leave it to? You want to go to Catadella's? What a... What's the matter? Maybe throw your hand is up. Maybe, right. maybe he could throw something this way. Any any possibility that maybe you can talk to John and he can throw something a little this way? Well, you know he's going to watch the show Friday, <laughs> so he'll if if he's so inclined. I don't think he will. You know, we have. I don't think he will. Well, we have two producers that that you know um, you know could use a few swordies. You know, you could throw a few 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 tidbits their way. If I may, I feel like we've gotten off topic. Was the question not from a portly gentleman? Yes, well, that, he... we're not even there yet. All right, so real quickly, now, th this gentleman, because of all this, he, he's, he, he feels he's getting out of shape. Is correct. That my and he, quite frankly, I've seen a picture of him. He kind of looks like he's out of shape. Well, you know something? I, at 78 years old, you also wrote to me that you take no medications whatsoever. <laughs> None. Zero. Not even an aspirin. Do you know that nine out of ten people your age take medications and pills? So whatever you're doing, whether you've got a couple of pounds on you, and the good thing about the pounds, it gets rid of the wrinkles because it draws <laughs> them down. And I'm sure you're a good-looking man. So there's, the, there's one side that says, you know, health-wise, you should lose some weight, and you've got to do it in moderation. I understand that. But this stuff about putting bananas, avocados, and grape juice, and all that kind of stuff into a blender is BS. John, you got the right idea. I salute you. I really do. I can't wait to meet you. You're my idol, my son. God bless you. I, I'm, I'm okay. I buy it. You guys, you guys okay with that? As always, it's a pleasure. I've got to run. <laughs> it's a I've got to go to the convent. If I were you. There's some problems. If I were you. I'd run about five or six miles, but that's just my, my, my opinion. <laughs> you know, do you want me to come back? I do. You can I, knock it off. Yeah. <laughs> Father Mikey, thank you so much. Nice seeing you. Take care. And there he goes, Father Mikey. Uh, I, hope he, I hope he bumps into Mike on the way back. But anyway, Chrissy, well, good guy. I, he is a good guy. guy. I know uh, Mike's going to, I think Mike's in the men's room. But anyway, He's uh, back. while we have a couple of minutes, yeah. uh, you have been on a roll with your music and your appearances. Have, if I you have, have an itch, do you need me to scratch it for you? No, that's You're good? inappropriate, okay. but thank you. Uh, <laughs> what do you have like for, for yeah. stuff coming up? I have, what do I have? So I sing in a few different bands. I sing in a big band. So we do a lot of like the old jazz Sinatra and things like that. So we did have a Sinatra Spectacular coming up, which we have now postponed until uh, the 18th of now November. Now that's a dinner show, correct? That is. That is $50 a ticket, but that is dinner. It's a three-hour show, like two-hour show, one-hour dinner. So three-hour nights, seven to ten. Uh, yeah, you get a beautiful dinner at Lindsay's over in Drakeit, and we'll uh, we'll perform for you all the all the classics, Sinatra and the Rat Pack we throw in. I'm doing a little Dean. And a little I saw, saw, I saw a yeah. clip of you uh, uh, when you were with this band. Yes. Uh, was it Kingston Day? I don't know where you no, were. No, that was our performance. Uh, it was a um, a charity you fundraiser did some for good our stuff. troops uh, at uh, Dream Diner. I think you were doing Kingsborough. Stand By Me. Stand By Me. So what did I do? No, I did Rock and Robin, and we were doing Oh, What's Going On? You might have seen that. Great so stage you. presence. Mikey, Thank have you, have you, you seen Thank it? Thank you. I, I saw her. Oh, oh, there you go. Nope, that's all right. I saw her clip. And it sounded excellent. Very good. Excellent. Yeah. Lenzies is nice because it's convenient to the Merrimack Valley. I mean, yeah. you're right there, right down the boulevard. Yeah. It, they, it's, it's a nice room to play in. I don't know if you've had an opportunity. I have not yet. No, I'm very excited. I've, I've, we've had so. a couple of... Is it a restaurant? Yeah. Yeah. Any yeah. good? And they do functions. Yeah. And yeah. Food is a bad. Uh, where is it? Uh, right on the bo low boulevard. Okay, I didn't know On that. the right-hand yeah, side. That one's the 18th of November, so you can go on Eventbrite and buy tickets for that one. Um, if you're local, there is. we're also playing my duet, uh, Rhythmic Overhaul. We're playing this Saturday at Sadie's Bar and Grill, just down the street. Now, yeah. that's you and one guitarist? Yes. Yep, me and a guitarist. We can take it down. That's why we're Rhythmic Overhaul. What's, I like so that. We, I like yeah, that. I do we too. break it down. What's the name you go by? Rhythmic Overhaul. Oh, it's not Chrissy Boom Boom anymore? No, that's the name of the band. I'm still Chris. Oh, that's okay. my stage name. I'm sorry. Name. I'm confused. I <laughs> confuse confused. people. And if you're into 70s disco, next weekend, the 17th, 
uh, in Drake It. Um, we are doing a 70s disco. My other band, that's the five piece, a big cover band. We're doing a 70s disco night, which is to raise money for uh, Team Walk for Cancer, Tufts. That's good uh, stuff. So are, good you, are you a disco guy? Good for you. I do like disco. Can I tell you? I still have the, the, I have the ball. You know when we had the place at the beach? Yeah. We invested in a disco. Worst investment they ever made. I mean, literally, it was a beautiful was room. Was disco out when you? No, guys this had was your nineteen. Se- this was at the end of our. This was not the, at the end of our career, nineteen seventy-seven. Okay. And we invested a lot of money into a beautiful disco at Hampton Beach. For what reason? Because it was, disco was big. Yeah. It, the place held four hundred and fifty people. We had the lights. Beautiful, beautiful venue. Where was this now exactly? Corner of B Street and Ocean Boulevard. The name of the disco was Amaze. A M A Z E, mm-hmm. and it was all. Mazes, you know those mirrors. See, I didn't know any of this. Oh God, yeah. And the first, but we had one little. Is that problem. where you performed? No, we no no. We was I was we ran it. We made one mistake. What's that? We was always one mistake. We were unable. Always one mistake. At the at the eleventh hour. Yeah. They voted us down getting a liquor license. <laughs> oh no. So whoops, we had to whoops. turn it into what's called a juice bar. <laughs> So it was a disco that served soft drinks. So it went over well on Saturday night. Did for, it? for the first week, for the first week, it went sure over it phenomenal. Uh, we were closed out of business in about four weeks. Four Done. weeks. Wow. How, how much of a bath? Oh, that was a big one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was that was a big one, you know. Well, ah, but you learn by your mistakes. That was yeah. a big one. Ours won't be just a juice bar. We'll, we'll have a regular bar there. But well, yeah, if anyone's interested in any of those shows, uh, in if you go to our description to today's episode, you will. Uh, there's a link to my uh, musical. Oh, good. Website. You put you put it there. Okay. Yeah, oh, we, good. we dropped it in so you guys can have a look there. It, it has a list of all the performances and where you can get tickets. Some of them are free shows. Some of them are ticketed because they're fundraisers and things like that. Chris, they're very talented. Chrissy's a very talented. Thank yeah, you. she is. She you mentioned Sadie's. I'll tell you, their food. Oh, my goodness. Their food is over the top. Yeah. Lebanese, when you, when it's the best Lebanese, Lebanese food. Oh, really? Oh, my, God. oh my goodness. Sometime when you're on stage, can you mention Mike and I? Just say, hey, you know. Yeah, when you show up to one. That's, that's there a good you point. go. <laughs> that's yeah. a good point. Shots fired. You're welcome. Let me, let me Tom has po- yet to be one it. of my performances. Uh, I, got it. I got you. it. Thank you. All right, Mikey, tell us about our good friend, Tommy Yamin. What's going on? There's a contest here that I really screwed up last week. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> sorry about that. I'm glad you brought it up because it ended today. <laughs> and we're recording this on Tuesday. So that's over. Let's so, go move on. <laughs> you killed it. Just to screw it <laughs> up you, even more. You Good massacred. Job. Yeah. I was even confused. Con- and I know all about it. I confused me. But, I confused you, my wife, uh, Chrissy. Ho- hopefully, uh, Pam is going to send me over. Uh, Pam, you mean, is going to send me over the winners. And we'll announce them on uh, next week's show. But, uh, yeah, it was, it was a nice little contest. But. You know something, we talk about the butcher boy and, you know, uh, Peter has been there and uh, made it known that he's there because of the Sicilian corner, as have many other people. But uh, for steaks, it always has been just an outstanding, I mean, you know, you talk about Delmonico. Delmonico's in this area are very, very popular, which is a rib steak. Right. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but it was, uh, there's a Delmonico restaurant. In New York I City. Do. And they're the ones that coined the ribeye Del as a Delmonico. I did not know and that. And the name is Delmonico was named after. If you had an auto one in a restaurant, bone in or bone out? I think you're getting screwed when you buy what, bone what, in. Because it just adds, the weight adds to the price. I mean, they have these steaks, right? I mean, it's a great marketing ploy. I mean, I love it. When I was a meat manager for Market Basket, the Moolahs, uh, I love selling them. Because you you know you got a tomahawk steak. It's a it's a rib, it's a ribeye with a freaking bone this big. Right. It looks like a dinosaur steak walking through the exactly. Wood. I've seen it. Everybody looks at it. It's, it's eye catching. It's a marketing so piece. W- <clears throat> think about what you're paying per pound for. Good bone. point. Uh, to me, I like my steaks an inch and a half thick. And you're uh, not a New York strip guy either, huh? I I like the Dell because it's got enough fat to really give you some really good taste to it. I don't like to eat fat, but by the time you're done cooking it on a high grill, on a high flame, and it should be always but dry if you heat. Cook, if you cook a really good New York sirloin, strip sirloin, hmm? 
Club sirloin. Club sirloin. I mean, that, you, if you cook it right, it's pretty pretty tender. Oh, also, absolutely, isn't it? absolutely. What about as a T-bone porterhouse? I was going to ask you about T-bone that. T-bone porterhouse comes from the same. It comes from a loin, a short loin. The first two or three steaks would be a porterhouse. All right. Then, as you go further back, the bone becomes more pronounced, and the tenderloin gets smaller. So you have a T. That's where you come up with the. So T-bone. you're better off with the porterhouse at the oh, very beginning, always, because okay. they're, they're usually about the same price. So it, it doesn't make sense not to go with, with the porterhouse. That, All right, that listen, we're going to take a quick break. Uh, you missed Father Mikey again. Sorry to hear that. I talked to him downstairs. Oh, you did. You bumped into him. Good. Boy, he was in a rush. What did you tell him? Did you insult him? I did not. I said, no, not at all. Oh. I just, I, you know, I told him, I think I did tell him he was a little portly uh, on his way oh. out. Oh. Yeah, I, told, I, told I don't like, think he paid attention because you know what he had in his hand? The Boston cream. <laughs> did he really? Yeah. All right, listen, when we come back, the great Michael Cataldo is going to be joining us with his new album. I had an opportunity to listen to it. It's unbelievable. Yeah, let me tell you something. All I know is that on the cover. Ooh, isn't she hot, huh? She's a hell of a lot better looking than him. Italian woman. I'll tell you that. Italian woman of the oh, best. Oh, my God. Hang in there. We'll be right back. This is David from the Sicilian Corner. You know, Mike, Tom, and I love to go to Salisbury Beach, but we love different things, and we can never agree. Tom likes the casual family-style dining with great Italian cuisine, Capri Seaside Italian Grill. Me, I love the elegant romantic vibe, sea glass with the amazing view and terrific menu with prices that'll make it the place you want to visit every week. Mike loves a drink in his hand and a cool ocean breeze right off the surf and the rhythms of an even cooler reggae band. We all know Mike loves Bob Marley tunes at Surfside. Who doesn't love a great show? National acts, comedy, regional favorites in the beautiful and intimate Blue Ocean Music Hall. Lucky for us, Atlantic Hospitality is a host of all these great places, and they treat everyone like they're Mike Lamazzo. And best of all, we never have to choose. Park the car once, and all of this fun is right at your fingertips. We can have it all in the heart of Salisbury Beach. Find out about all the ways you can have a great night at Salisbury Beach at NorthShorePavilion.com. And Mike, Tom, and I will see you there. This is Tom Zappala, located in the heart of downtown Haverhill, The Havel Beef Company is a full-service, old-fashioned butcher shop and meat market that continues to be a valued family tradition since 1952. Peter and Monica Carboni's Havel Beef offers individualized service from an outstanding selection of marinated sirloin tips, homemade sausage, marinated chicken, and thick, juicy Chairman Reserve steaks. Your family deserves the best, so call Peter at 978-374-4795 or visit their website at w www.haverbeef.com. Hi, this is Mike, and I would like to tell you about the Deborah K. Law Offices, a firm that is focused on estate planning, probate, trust administration, and elder law issues. You will feel comfortable discussing important issues concerning both you and your loved ones, as well as having the information you need to make an informed decision about your family's future. How do I know? Because I'm a client of Dan Deborah Care. If you want to have peace of mind knowing that your loved ones are protected, call Deborah K. Law Offices today in Massachusetts. 978-686-4645 in New Hampshire, 603-894-4141. At Catadella Funeral Home, we reinvest in our business to provide your family with the best facilities. It begins with a beautifully landscaped exterior, parking for 250 vehicles, and a comfortable and inviting access to our renovated interior. Funerals can be costly, so you should review and compare plans to make sure you receive services that are fairly priced. I invite you to experience the Catadella difference in cost, facility, and service. Catadella is honoring and celebrating the lives of the people we loved, providing exceptional care since 1929. This is Cindy and Mike Kunzler, owners of Grazi Italian Restaurant in Dragut, Massachusetts. The hidden gem of the Merrimack Valley. In addition to spectacular views overlooking our golf course, we have an incredible Italian chef, Benny Curdy. Benny was born and raised in Italy and came to be our executive chef in 2013. Benny is so passionate about cooking. If you haven't experienced the food at Grazi Italian Restaurant, you're truly in for a treat. Grazi Italian Restaurant, located at Four Oaks Country Club. Sopa na chata frida 
You know, one thing about Michael is that different. He's, he's got a pronounced uh, Michael Costello welcome, first of all. Hi, Michael. Ciao a tutti. Thanks so much for having me on. You Father know, Mikey, Tom and Dave. I, you, know, you know, I I've got to say something though. You, Hope you had a good Labor Day weekend. We did. We did. Fantastic. You you have a distinct Latino kind of a, a vibe with your music. Arab, and I love it. I Arab. love it. Love it. Thank you. It's all done on purpose. Oh, I'm sure it is. I mean, I'm a listen. I'm a. I'm a. I love timbales. I love conga drums. I mean, that's uh, that's in my. I love it. Absolutely. You know, I'm love glad it. you brought that up. The production end of that song is absolutely incredible. The arrangement. You know, Thank I you. tip my hat because this is something a little bit different for you. This is something a little bit out of your wheelhouse, and you've done a wonderful job with it. You really have. Thank you, Father Mikey. Um, I've actually been doing this for quite some time. I'm just getting better and better. Is that what it is? It. Yeah. Just like a chef perfects steak over time. He knows just how much salt, pepper, butter, whatever the case may be. Same thing is with song production. So the name of your song, once again? It's Spetu Petia, Waiting for You. So in Italian, I love it would be... Aspettare per te. Okay. All right. Calabrian, spettupetia. Sicilian is also spettupetia. So, Michael, let me ask you. So, is, is, is there some Latino influences in your music? Oh, yeah. I'm talking guys like maybe Tito Fuente or Puente or Carlos Santana. I, I get that vibe. Is, is there a little influence there? Sure. Yeah, it goes back 400 plus years ago. Really? In a sense that. Southern Italy was dominated by the Moors of yep. North Africa. Yep. It was dominated by the Spaniards. So that's where I uh, get inspiration from all the various cultures that came together and mixed and who brought this rhythm and who brought this melody and who brought this instrument. So I, I'm, I'm a child of, uh, who loves history and I read up on all this, uh, on all this history and I, and I dream it. And then of course, today's modern musicians who are doing their thing. And then I'm kind of taking it all in and then whatever's going through my life, I'm a vessel, and I put it back out there. Very nice. How many uh, dialects are there to the Calabrian uh, language? How many? So, so there's a there's the Calabrian language, Calabrian just language. like the Sicilian language, the Neapolitan language, Florentine language. All those languages all coexisted together six seven hundred years ago. Dialect means that the language is a derivative of a principal language. Okay. No, 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 no. The Florentine language just happened to be chosen by the powers that be when Italy got united in 1861 by Garibaldi as the chosen national language. But the Florentines, as they were speaking, the, the Sicilians were speaking their language. The right. Neapolitans were speaking their language. These were Multi-block. all city states and kingdoms. If, if Boccaccio or Dante Alighieri lived in Sicily, the Sicilian language would have been the principal language of Italy. Interesting, right. very interesting, and you're dead on too. Your song just came out. Your song just came out, Michael. Right? It did. Uh, uh, second, Friday, September second. Yeah. It just came out, and we're doing spectacularly well. Just peep, peep, I am. We just kind of myself. We kind of tease people a little bit. Uh, yeah, with the song. If people are interested in getting it, how would they go about doing it? Uh, all the various music services, uh, Apple. Okay, they're so downloaded. Spotify, um, right. Uh, uh, Amazon. You know, uh, uh, Michael, that, that's, it's amazing. And listen, you've been in this business for many, many years. It's amazing how the entire music industry Changing. has changed and evolved into, instead of walking into a record store and paying 99 cents for a 45, you download it. In on, on to any from any any music service, it's just uh, it's easy, it's quick, and it's wonderful. 
And and the music industry has been revolving for the past 125 years. Right, right. Remember with the wax cylinders? Oh, God. <laughs> Remember it all? Yeah, it's always evolving, always evolving. This might be the final frontier of how far it goes. On demand, play whatever you want, when you want, wherever you Absolutely. want. Absolutely. Listen, before we let you go, what is, uh, what's in store for Michael Castaldo as far as appearances? What's, what's down the line here, or down the road? Sure. We got uh, a, a couple of performances in, uh, in New Jersey, in my neck of the woods, uh, a festival in Arizona, the middle of October. Oh, really? The other, the other performances in our early and mid-October. And, and we're releasing more product. The, the next single drops September 16th, which is the instrumental version of uh, Spetopatia. So it's going to be a very chill. And then October 7th, another version, a reggaeton version of Africa, and then early November, the uh, the classic Feliz Navidad by Jose Feliciano. I'm doing my own version of that. Fantastic, wow. Michael. You're keeping yourself very busy. Listen, you look fantastic, by the way, guy. Mike, Mike uh, I, really. My brother Mikey, Tom, you guys look good. When I get to your place, I want to be just well, as good looking Michael, as you guys. Michael, let me tell you something. Are you going to be in New England or in the Boston area in the near future? Do you have anything planned, No. Uh, I'm open to any 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 suggestions, guys. Because <laughs> next year next year is our hundredth uh, anniversary of the Feast of Saint Alfio, and let's see what we can do. Maybe we can uh, get you in there somehow. I just want to make a comment. That beautiful church, the Holy Rosary Shrine. Right. Picture Michael singing his Christmas songs oh, good. in that church. Absolutely, and do it as a fundraiser for Saint Alfio to Absolutely. kick off the hundred. Absolutely. Unbelievable. You would fill that place up like uh, that's a beautiful church. The acoustics, you would be such a major hit. It would be you, unbelievable. So, Michael, where can they uh, download? So they can download it. Uh, what's, what's, what's your recommendation? Where's the best place to go to download that song? Uh, people could choose their favorite preferred services, but I, I like to direct traffic to Spotify because it's the big it's the big uh, it's the big the, the, monster out there. It's eighty yeah. percent of the market of, of of worldwide people listen to Spotify. Fantastic, Michael. We love you. You mean a lot to us, uh, and uh, we love having you on the show. And and you guys mean a lot to me as well. Thank you so much for your generosity of time, Anytime. for allowing me to tell my story and listen and, and and sharing my music with your listeners. Anytime. Have a great one. Take care, Michael Take care, Cristaldo. Mike. He is so talented, man. Yeah. Oh, he's talented, talented guy. It's one thing to get up there and just sing. I can sing. You know, you get Johnny Mathis. The guy has got a voice and a half. He's 120. But not quite, but almost. But he stands there and just sings. This guy gets you moving. We, it, it, the, the tempo. We were the, talking about. Was upbeat. I was talking to Chrissy about that before we went on the air. I think, you know, you have to have a great voice, obviously. Right. But stage presence is so important. Absolutely. I, in my opinion, that's 40% of it. I mean, you can again, I'm, God rest his soul, he was a great singer, B.J. Thomas. He, was, he had a great voice, he had great hits, but he would stand up, remember, he, he would just stand there. But that's the way he, right. You know, Lucille and I went out to Maryland to go see him before we brought him to the feast. Right. We listened to all the acts right. before we brought him in. And great I, voice. I sat there while he was doing rehearsal. And I loved it. Then we went to his show. People were standing up. They knew the words. They knew the li- and uh, uh, they were singing that's... along. But yet he didn't get. He just stands there. He, he kind of relaxed. That's why I think I think that uh, it really is important. Uh, stage presence is is huge, huge. Uh, I agree with you 110. percent I was really happy to hear that uh, things went as well as they did at the society and for the feast because, you know, you break your back and, you, you know, you're constantly fundraising ad books. Well, you know, I mean, and, for, and, and to see it come the way you planned it. Yeah. It's, and the it's weather, amazing. The weather is the wild card. You know, from, from a personal standpoint, obviously, um, you know, uh, I'm at a little disadvantage because I'm in Florida for part of the winter. Uh, but I told Tony I'm going to make a concerted effort to get involved in every single one of those meetings. Those Zoom meetings via are Zoom, wonderful. Via yeah. Zoom. Thank God for, for technology because now I can really get involved uh, with the organization uh, for those three months that I'm gone. Because th- I'll tell you what, the 100th, 
I can't stress this. The hundredth next year is going to be. I agree. I think it's going to be one of the biggest inv- events in the history of the city. That's. I honestly, honestly feel that. How many people were asking me on Sunday? You know, wh- what are you going to do? What are they going to do for next year? What are they going to oh, do yeah. for next? I mean, I must lot, have- lot, lot, of, lot, of, lot happening again. It's very fluid. Uh, there's a lot of great ideas that are being thrown out. And uh, hats off to the city of Lawrence for working. With absolutely the society, absolutely. So you know everybody's kind of giving their ideas. Nothing has been, no decisions have been made. Nothing's been formulated. But some of the things that are being thrown out are some really, really, really great, great, great things. So you know, you know, again, case in point, like for instance, Marianne Esposito. You know, we're we're what a peach. We're working to get Marianne. Into the cafe to do a cooking demo. She'd love it. Do a book signing. People love her. She's got a huge following. You know, Absolutely. something like that would be would be great. I said it before. I'll say it again. You talk about an ambassador of our Absolutely. Italian culture Absolutely. and traditions. She's that it. woman, she's on a plateau by herself. All right, Mikey. We're just about out of time, brother. Nice seeing you again. Always a pleasure. God bless you, my child. Tell Father Mikey. My son. Up into, my son. My yeah. child. Whatever. Yeah. Uh, Chrissy and David, thank you so much. Another great job. Peter, thank you for the tomatoes and the cucumbers and the lettuce and the uh, (laughs) mushrooms and the what else, whatever. With that being said, remember, folks, if you can't make fun of yourself, please don't make fun of anyone and have a great week. Enjoy, everybody. Ciao. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.